Welcome back to the WRPL. It's the podcast where we talk about all the things we were watching, reading, playing, and listening to. My name is Ben. And I'm Steve. What's up, Steve? Not much, Ben. Uh... Merry early Christmas. Yeah, we still got some weeks. We have a little bit of time until the end of the year, and we get to do our big hoopla end of the year, looking back, looking forward event. Uh, have you, you haven't put up your Christmas tree yet, right? Uh, if I own one, I probably would not have. It would just be uh, uh, stored away collecting dust. We don't put up a Christmas tree. One, we have a cat. And two, mm. live in an apartment, not a lot of space. Even though I see people in people's windows sure. at my apartment, like, damn, did you have to rearrange your whole furniture to do it? Because we have a pretty big couch, uh, so I'm not sure where it'd be. Probably where, like, the cat tree is. Yeah, but I imagine a lot of people in your neighborhood have children in those yeah. apartments, so it's like, you gotta sense. have a tree. Yeah. Uh, I see you have put up your tree. Yeah, uh, I, see I have the two decorations. I gave you. <laughs> yeah, there's two decorations on it. One is the ornament you gave me. Uh, What's the other one? Like a chihuahua and a hat? What is that? Uh, a, a star and a cup or something? Let me go take a look. <laughs> But yeah, it's a it's the season. I haven't been watching many Christmas movies. I don't give a shit about Christmas movies unless they're tangentially Christmas. Sorry, still plugged in. That's good. Uh, you know, there's all the the talk of is Gremlins a Christmas movie? Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Like, I don't mind movies like that. But when it's Christmas with the Cranks or anything like that, I I don't care. Oh, and. Uh, Gremlins is a Christmas movie. Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. <gasps> because it's not about Christmas. It just takes place during Christmas. It has to be about Christmas to be a Christmas movie. Sorry. Mm. And if if the that logic uh, uh, existed, then you know that um, the Predator movie that came out not too long ago would be a Halloween movie. Because it takes place on Halloween. But it doesn't have anything to do with Halloween. So I don't think that would count. Die Hard, just, it's at a Christmas party. Doesn't make it a Christmas movie. Gizmo was purchased as a Christmas gift for the son, so that's a Christmas Yeah, movie. but he has a machine gun now. Ho, ho, ho. I, I don't care. You no. know, I <clears throat> I really don't have a strong stance on it. I don't care either way. I don't care either way. Um, but I do think there is a world where, and uh, by a world I mean this world, where like some things kind of transcend what the intent was okay. where like i imagine they made this movie set it at christmas because it's a fun thing but yes has nothing to do with christmas i ten thousand percent agree but i think that whether you the society intended to or not it kind of just became that and so now it is yeah and therefore it is just as much a christmas movie as anything else because uh it has just sort of entered in it it, it it went past what it was meant to do, and now it's another thing. I, that's fine. I'm not going to ever fight anybody on this, but that's just my two cents. I think many people consider the Lord of the Rings films a Christmas movie, because but it's not as uh, sincere to do with Christmas, because Christmas doesn't exist in that world. Yeah, it just but came out just, during Christmas. It came out during Christmas, and it just kind of has like a feel good vibe to sure. it. Um, See, it's I something just... you can watch, and because you're you know, you're off for the day and like, oh, we have time to kill with the family. Let's watch Lord of the Rings. And so Lord of the Rings has become a I, tradition for a lot of people at Christmas time. I get that. Um, it, and it it was for three years with my family, but it was during Thanksgiving. We had time. So we watched Fellowship. Mm. Kind of my, you know, my, my mom's a, a movie buff, so she really enjoyed it. Then uh, the next year when we were watching Two Towers... And of course, I'm making them watch the like extended cuts. Of course, because I, I got them for Christmas. So gotcha. then it's like the next year following and uh, watch the next one. And my grandma was watching, so we had to do a little bit of a catch up. But her mind was blown when she saw Gollum. She's like, "Is that a guy? Is that a person?" I'm like, no, that's that's <laughs> fake. That's computers. And she just like, could not comprehend it because like you know. King Kong was out in theaters when when she was a kid. Right. So seeing it was two thousand and five. Seeing the advancement, it was, it was really kind of fun. But I felt bad because we could only. How do you wrap up or, or uh, give a synopsis for the first Lord of the Rings movies that you really could everything make sense for the second one? Sure. It's like we, we try to do everything. And then when Gandalf comes back, it's like, oh, yeah, that uh, remember how at the beginning that that guy that was dying? Yeah, that happened. Sorry. And, it, <laughs> and especially, you know, it's just like 
kind of pitching a board game with a bunch of rules on like you want to yeah. do game night as soon as you say start explaining things people just check out immediately yep. they're just like nope just pop it in we'll figure it out as we go along exactly. unless you're like, into fantasy and that kind of thing like you going well you see uh thousands of years ago the ring came from mordor and there <laughs> gandalf and rivendell and blah 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 you're just like huh yeah. i've i've it- checked i checked out at you know wizards or whatever i checked out a, a thousand years ago it really was just there was this evil ring that needs to be destroyed this group of people are trying to do it let's hit play yeah well today's episode is about y2k a uh, topical kind of of uh, uh christmas time movie sure uh, i'm gonna have a couple other things besides y2k to talk about i'm gonna start hit me i think i, I want to start with a movie I think you would enjoy for the technical side. Okay. It's called Mads. And it's M like capital M A D capital S. Why? I don't know. But it's French. It's pretty much it's a zombie movie. Okay. You know, a guy's picking up drugs, this crazy woman runs out in the road, gets into his car, stabs herself in the throat, gets her blood all over him. He doesn't want to call the cops because he has drugs on him, he's high, and he tries to just drive home. But there's government people after him and and her body, and he starts acting a little funny and going to a party, and his girlfriend like bites his lip or she he bites her lip or something. So then you know she starts feeling a little funny and like is it the drugs? Is it a zombie thing? Um, and it's kind of that day one zombie outbreak sure. sort of thing. The thing that I think you would like is it's all one take. Oh, and apparently I don't know how true it is. But apparently there's only five cuts. They did it in five chunks. Sure. And you you go from like the drug dealer's house down the road with the crazy lady all the way to his house. And then when his friends show up, they get into a truck, go into a party that's in the neighborhood. When he leaves the party, he's walking back to it. It's, like, it's in a small uh, area of town. Uh, they do a really good job of hiding the cuts, except like... They do a good job of hiding it, but I know what they're doing. Sure. There's one that's kind of bad where he's going through some tall grass and just where they cut, like he was going straight and then they kind of cut and now he's going to the right and it doesn't look quite mm. right. And the other times are, oh, they're going to the party. So they're getting into the back of the truck and they're just sitting there for a minute. And the girlfriend's like, what's wrong? Why are you acting so weird? And he's staring off at the lights because they're probably mounting the camera to mm. the truck. You know, you need a little bit of time. There's a part where they're on a moped and like, okay, why aren't they leaving it they're probably like getting it onto the flatbed so they can drive off while two people sure. are on it. you know you can see the little things like that but you you don't have as much push into the back of someone's t-shirt and then back out and that's where your right, car right, right, is right. so uh technically really cool and i really enjoy it. and the the zombiness is it takes a while you start going a little crazy but then you could kind of rein it back in but then you start wanting to go crazy again uh, not the greatest zombie movie. It's a lot like 28 Days Later, uh, but I just think that one take really sells it. All right. That does sound something like that. Would be right up my alley. Yeah. You go. So I started playing a game. Haven't beaten oh, yet. Oh, we didn't roll. We didn't roll. We oh, didn't roll. good save. Good save. <clears throat> I don't know what's up with my voice. Nat 20, uh, baby. Uh, yeah. Uh, you got to get a nat 20 to, to tie. 10. All right, well, you know, if it was a death save, you'd, you'd save. <sighs> Fucking God. Mm. Oh, I'm getting that steal this year. <laughs> mm. Or the veto, I should say. Yeah. All right, go on. You start anyway, the... Uh, yeah, I started a game. Uh, and I won't talk too much about it from uh, until, I f- until I finish it. Uh, but... I'm playing Alan Wake 2. You yeah. mentioned it like two weeks ago that you were starting it. I was starting it? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm into it, and I talked to my uh, my two brother-in-laws, and they both had played it. One didn't finish it, one did. It. But the one that didn't finish it was like, don't let that be like a... I didn't enjoy it, so I stopped playing it. It's just time... Life, gets life in got in the way, and I you know, haven't gone back to it yet. Because they both said they really liked it. And I talked on here about playing Alan Wake 1 and just kind of like uh, when they did the remaster. And because I remember being a kid, I was like, yeah, Alan Wake was 
you know, cool. It was different. I haven't played a game like it before. Not does not hold up. Not wow. a fun gameplay. Interesting story, but not fun. Uh, where this is basically just they took all the components of like what made The Last of Us kind of good without, you know, and you get your like weapon tree and stuff like that. But you're not you don't have to craft anything. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but it like the combat system is very much the same. Um, and sort of like the horror survival horror vibe is very much the same. Uh, but. It's from the same company that made Control, which I know mm. you did play. Did not like, but <laughs> I, I like that world. It yeah. seems fun. That seems like a good TV show where you can spotlight all these kooky things. Mm-hmm. But her story and the gameplay was not a fan of. Yeah. Uh, now, Control, I feel like I wanted to like a lot uh, because there are so many interesting and cool things that were happening. But like, I had no idea how they connected mm-hmm. i don't remember what the story was at all a, or what story there was fucking documents you got to read like oh if you want the full <laughs> story read this like i'm in the middle of playing a game i did not turn this on to read yeah uh so that game was cool i beat it don't remember what happened at the end don't remember anything of what it was really about just i remember there being interesting visuals uh but anyway the long-awaited sequel to alan wake alan wake 2 uh but I, it's not as weird as I expected it to be. But it definitely is a little odd. And, you know, it does cut into... They're sort of like uh, live actors oh. with the game play at certain points. Like during cutscenes. Uh, and I mean, I'm assuming the actors who voice these characters? I don't think so. That's uh, weird. Because uh, I think they had a voice actor for Alan Wake... And I could be wrong. Maybe it looks exactly like him. But it seems like they kind of cast someone who just looks like how they would imagine Alan Wake. Okay. And they were like, well, fuck. We need to just dub over this guy's lines with, like, the voice actor. Oh. Um, I, I'll look into it when I do my full review. Okay. Uh, but uh, it's it's good. It's very... Uh, it's at least so far. I don't know how weird it'll get in the back half of the game. I'm only about halfway through, I think. Uh but you're jumping between two different characters, Alan Wake and this FBI agent who's like on the case and kind of like uncovering like what's going on with like Alan Wake. And he's been missing for 13 years and he pops out of a lake and he doesn't remember where he's been because he says he's claiming he's in the dark place. And it's all this weird shit that I'll get into. But I think it's right up your alley, Ben. I think you would dig it. I don't think you really need to play the first one. Maybe like um, get a synopsis. On yeah, watch YouTube. a YouTube video that sort of like recaps it. Okay. Um, because it might not make that much sense to you anyway. Yeah. Um, but you just know he went to the dark place and he's uh, things he writes kind of like comes true. Um, and, and then all these sexy ladies <laughs> came out of the cabin <laughs> and they loved me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I've never seen Twin Peaks, but I imagine it's Twin Peaks vibes. Okay. Uh, and kind of like, like Twin Peaks. Because I- Twin Peaks was just a weird show where... There was a bunch of, it was during at the same time as like the X-Files, right? Earlier. And earlier than the X-Files? Yeah. Okay. Because um, that was just, he goes to this town and weird things just, happen. Well, and some of it's like, unex- and, and it's like unexplained a... stuff. And yeah, the, it's like it, stuff out left field. You're like, well, what does that mean? Like, you'll never know. Yeah. It, it's, guess, it's like that. Like with David Lynch, especially if you watch the, the, Twin Peaks movie and then the revival series, there mm-hmm. is stuff that's like, oh, you remember how they never answered that? They finally did answer it later on, but in the time, like, what am I watching? What's this little guy talking backwards and stuff? It, it, it I was not allowed to watch it because my mom and older sister watched it when I first saw it. It was going to be too scary for me, mm. so they didn't. And then when I got a chance, I was like, okay, this is not interesting at all. I may like it now, yeah. but I just, I really don't care about David Lynch. Yeah. I don't know if I've actually seen a David Lynch. No Mulholland Drive? Nope. Elephant Man? Nope. Oh, well, Elephant Man's great. That's his best movie. Yeah, I mean, there's stuff I'm willing to watch. Yeah. Uh, just a Racerhead? Fuck a Racerhead. Never came know. across oh, my radar. God. Was he... Um... No, I'm, I'm, never mind. I'm thinking of Jim Jarmish. Okay. Uh, I was going to... What was that, Adam... Adam? What was that Adam Driver where yeah, he's a bus? Die. No, oh, no, no. The, where he's like a bus driver. It was called Patterson, but that was Jim Jarmish, oh. not David Lynch. Oh. Anyway. Anyhow. Anything else with Alan Wake? No, because I'll wait till you know I actually beat it. But I think once I beat it, you can borrow it. Okay. Because I think you could get into it. Okay. You might not like it. Maybe you'd play a little bit. And you're like, I don't care about any of this stuff. But it's 
I think if you saw it in a TV show or a movie, you'd be like, all right, this might be my thing. I, I've been wanting to start a new game. Uh, I, I looked at my library of things. I was like, oh, yeah, there's a wrestling game. I'll, I'll download that and I'll play it for a bit. I was like, oh, sign up for online with your email so then you can track your progress. I'm like, God, don't be one of those games mm. where I have to sign in every single time. But I just played a couple of matches. I'm like, eh, yeah, I could probably get in this, but I don't care. But you know what I want to start playing? Give me a hint. It's going to be very different than any game that I ever play. Ooh. Because it's online. Oh. It's not story-based. Oh. And it's kind of like a multiplayer shooter. I got nothing. Marvel Rivals. Oh, I should have guessed. It looks so much fun. I love the art design behind it. And it just... And I love that it's not a, a first-person shooter. It's a shooter, but... I don't know the the characters that they they choose and some of the the silly little powers that they do. It just looks like a lot of fun. I think when it comes out, you know, maybe I'll pick it up. Well, you let me know how it is. It, okay. it doesn't. It didn't strike my fancy, mm -hmm. but you know, maybe it gets rave reviews and everyone says how fun it is. And then if you're like, it, it, it's not free, is it? I think they were like in they're in open beta testing right now. Uh, but you still, you know, had to pay for it. Sure, but it comes out soon. I don't know if it's a full price game or what, but okay. Um, I just wasn't sure if it was like a Fortnite thing where you could download it and play for play. free, or if it's a Overwatch thing. I'd say it's closer to Overwatch. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Um, there's a a thing. I don't know if they're they're gonna nerf it, but like Doctor Strange could open up a portal and then put the other in somewhere else, so you go through it and just pop out wherever, and you could kind of like mess with your enemies or your your teammates. And so he, uh, someone put it right in front of the door of where the bad guys come out, and then the exit was, like, right over the edge, so everybody runs out and then just dies immediately. <laughs> so I'm sure they're going to, like, change that. Yeah. Uh, very funny, but, yeah, I'm interested in that. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, okay. Ooh, uh, let's, okay. I know you don't care, but there's a new Star Wars show. Skeleton Crew. Mm -hmm. Jude Star Law. Jude Law is in it. Um, it's only been two episodes so far. comes out Mondays. Uh, he's barely in it in the second episode. Uh, so pretty much we're on this planet. I think it's called like at Atlan, which I hate the name because they already have the at ats or the at ats mm -hmm. so to have a planet called at Atlan. I, I don't get it. And there's probably a good reason because this planet doesn't exist. Everybody, when they tell people, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. When they tell people, this is where we're from. They're like, uh, yeah, sure. It'd be like us saying I'm from Atlantis. You know, it's like, that's, yeah. a, that's a myth. Nobody, that doesn't exist anymore or whatever. Um, but so on this planet, it's, you know, some kids are going to school. You get to see suburbia in Star Wars, which is very similar to our suburbia. You know, sure. lawns and streetlights and buses and freeways. Uh, they're going to school. This is, this is post-Jedi, uh, Return of the Jedi. So it's... The Republic is trying to rebuild, and uh, everyone's trying to learn their place. And the main kid and his buddy, who's like a little blue elephant guy, uh, they like Jedis. They don't know a lot about it, but they, uh, they've they read it in their little digital books, and they just kind of play it at the bus stop. Um, but they want to be more than just like an analyst or whatever. Uh, there's also two girls who like racing street bikes and kind of a tough, hard nosed girl who's going to, you know, trick you into painting the fence for you, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, though they find a door in the ground and the boy thinks, oh, it's a secret Jedi temple. And they're like, well, we don't know what's in it, but I bet there's parts that we can scrap for my bike upgrades. They get inside and it's a ship and it powers on and just takes off. And so the four of them, along with a robot that's in there, uh, just, you know, take off. And they're like, oh, we're going through the barrier. No one's ever done this before. I guess people don't leave this planet. They end up at a outpost for pirates. And they're like they're trying to play it cool. You know, he has some some cr like Republic credits and they're like going gaga over it like they haven't seen these in forever or they're worth a lot they're telling them where they're from and everyone thinks they're liars and then some you know werewolf looking guy shows up and like 
that's my ship you're on. How the fuck do you have my ship? And, you know, captures them, puts them in prison. And that's kind of where we're at right now. Uh, it's the first one's a little just kind of simple, but once they get into space and you see the amount of creatures and robots or droids, it's a really impressive looking show. Um, I'm enjoying it a lot, like more than I did uh, Ahsoka or uh, Acolyte. You know, when they came out, it's like, okay, we'll see this. I'm kind of like, yeah, cool. Let's fucking go. I It does have that Steven Spielberg, E.T. emblem, okay. you know, young kid feel of going on an adventure and everything's big and scary, but we'll probably be safe. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I, it's a good time so far. Okay. I didn't really know the show existed and I, I had heard the name Skeleton Crew and I actually watched the trailer for the first time, I think like four or five days ago. Didn't really do anything for me. Uh, so let me know how it ends yeah. and, you know, maybe I'll get around to it. Like you, you talked up Andor enough mm-hmm. to where mm-hmm. it made me watch Andor. Yeah. Uh, so I, I am open to trying things, but I, you know, I need yeah. to know it's worth my time. There's some fun little Easter eggs. One, I noticed two, I didn't catch. Um, but, like the robot on the ship. <laughs> That's funny. They're like, he's a pirate robot, but we can't put a big pirate hat on him. So what are you going to do to make him a pirate? Oh, one of his legs is kind of busted. So he walks with a limp. Of course. One of his eyes is busted out. So it looks like he's wearing an eye patch. And his name is SM33. So it Smee? looks like me. Of course. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> which I thought that yeah, was- I'm not watching this show. No, I thought that was cute. And then, there was a part of the little elephant people are watching their hologram TV and they use some of the dancers and acrobats from the uh, Star Wars holiday special and they repurpose that footage. Like, okay, that's that's fun. And then I think the coolest one, when they're on the spaceport, they're looking at like strange animals that are in cages and there's a little flying goober that <laughs> is from Captain EO from forever ago. Uh, and then it's like, you know, George Lucas helped create it. It was like Michael Jackson, 3D space thing. Star Wars was big, so they, D- Disney wanted to have a Star Wars esque thing. Um, and, um, you know, they got Michael Jackson and, and Angelica Houston, directed by, I think it's like directed by Scorsese. Um, and it was like a, a thing that was so over budget. Um, but I remember seeing it as a kid when I went down to um, Disney World. First time ever experiencing 3D. This little flying goober flies out at you at the very end. I've never seen so many people grabbing in the air. <laughs> me too. It got me. It is. It was amazing. And I bet the movie's not very good. But like, I didn't notice that it was that little guy. But it they lingered on it long enough that made you go, "That's probably something." And then I saw online like, "Look, it's the little goober," and like, "Cool." So there's there's just like fun stuff in it. I will say the lead, he's a little annoying. It's always like, Jeremy, stop touching things. Fine. Touches a thing. And it's like over and over again. Like, fucker, you are the, the reason we are in this situation. Stop fucking around. Um, so hopefully he reigns that shit in. But all in all, so far, so good. It's uh, eight episodes, six episodes, ten eight. episodes? Eight? Yeah. Okay. Remember when we used to get a bunch of episodes of stuff? Yeah, I know. You look at those are times. old things and it'd be like 24 minimum. Go, go look at like Bonanza. It was like 50 episode seasons, two seasons a year. You know, it was just like nonstop. You worked on that show. That's what you did. But now all of Hollywood, they work on movies and shows and they're doing podcasts and YouTube things. So their schedule is you know, harder to, to lock it all down. But back in the day, it was like, no, you work for this company. You're doing a show. You don't have time to go do that movie. And that's why so many people are just like pigeonholed into one thing. But you, you got, you know, 500 episodes of Gilligan's Island, you know? Your turn. My turn. I watched uh, this. I actually watched this last week and forgot to bring it up on the podcast. Uh, so I'm going to talk about it now. I watched uh, Damsel. Oh, on yeah. Netflix. Uh, my wife and I had some free time. We're like, well, let's watch a movie. We haven't watched a movie together in a minute. I was like, great. I love doing that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I, I feel like I've been I've not been good to movies lately. I get home from work. I'm going to watch a movie 
or I'm going to spend 45 minutes trying to find a movie, and then I'm just going to watch two hours of YouTube. Yep. So same. I, I've just been bypassing the looking for movies now and just go straight to YouTube, and I feel like a bastard. Yep. Agreed. Uh, but I was just like, you pick the movie. I don't care what it is. Uh, so we ended up watching Damsel, and it was fine. It's not bad. Yeah. Uh, it definitely has potential for uh, – I could see a Damsel too. Sure. Um do I need to or want to? Not really. Um, Millie Bobby Brown's fine, and I think you could have replaced her with like any young yeah. actress. And uh, did you know she, she's like seventy percent deaf? I did not know that. And she got like sick when she was young and uh, affected her hearing. Yeah, bummer. Yeah. Anyway, um, I remember we talking about the dragon, uh, and so, and I remember I think different you, and unique looking. Yeah, different and uni- unique looking. I think you showed me a picture, and I was like, oh. Or no, maybe we watched it after the podcast. Maybe, right? yeah. You talked about it. Uh, but I kind of forgotten. And it is definitely an interesting looking dragon. It's kind of more like a chimera dragon. Mm-hmm. It's kind of got like more of a liony face and a little bit of a mane, uh, a prehensile tail. Um, I but, just feel like the size differs. Like sometimes it feels like it's really big and sometimes yeah. it's a little smaller. Um, but yeah, it was a perfectly fine like adventure film. I think uh, any sort of, you know, that... 12 to 18 demographic could enjoy this film. Uh, uh, yeah, I could it, see young girls being like, this is cool. Yeah. I don't want the pretty princess stuff. I want something a little more hardcore. Yeah, if you're, you know, into fantasy at all, it's, you know, a nice little adventure. Um, it, it, like, But if you're looking for, like, story or real character work, there's really yeah. nothing here uh, in terms of just like, oh, a girl gets tricked into marrying this guy who actually turns out to be a bad guy, even though he's doesn't really want to be a bad guy. He's just yeah, kind of like stuck, stuck in his stuck food with his, mil- with his stuff. family stuff, uh, and then is able to like do what no other girl did before and like turn the tables on the dragon, who then you know gets helps released, her get, right? helps her defeat the family, and yeah. then they kind of team up, and it's like <laughs> tune in next time to see what happens with yeah. these two. It's like, well, I don't know if anything ever will. No. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we had a good time, and you know, I went in with pretty low expectations, and uh, CGI was fine. I just kind of wish there was a little bit more, you know, meat to it, or like emotional depth. Like there's death of characters close to her, and death of it, the babies. You know why the the yeah, and, mad. you know, it none of that really seemed like to matter to anybody. You know, they're just kind of like, oh yeah, see, they didn't make it. Anyway, uh, and it, so it was just fine. Uh, C, you know, it, it, unoffensive, uh, simple story, but entertaining enough. So C. I've, I've used this example, you know, like um, the, the Jaden Smith, Will Smith. Uh, After Earth. After Earth. It's a video game movie with no video game where it's like you get the the blade upgrades. He has like his little health pack or his oxygen, you know, whatever it is. He fights many bosses. It just felt like it's an adaptation of a video game. And I think Damsel's kind of the same. Yeah, but she only really has one thing after the entire movie. It's not like she fights it and then gets away and or gets she doesn't really get upgrades either. (laughs) No, no, but it's like she finds the little worm things that glow. So now she can see in the dark. Uh, uh sure. I, I I just feel like maybe maybe it's not a full video game. Yeah. But this is maybe the the intro level. This is the tutorial on how to jump, how to swing. You defeat this dragon, you get out, and then the rest of the game would be her fighting other dragons. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because the whole thing in this movie is she is basically like her father sells her because the kingdom is broke and here's this super rich kingdom that's like they'll give us all this money if you marry this guy now I, the father's not like a dick bag about it no, he's like this is what you did back in the day yeah it's just like you know doesn't want to do this to his daughter but it's like if we I, we're in charge we need to care for, about our people mm-hmm. this is the only way we can do that yeah. then we're i'm in, sorry like, but permanent winter we have no crops <laughs> everyone's gonna die just go marry this yeah dude. just go marry this dude um Who's a total hunk, by the way. Mm -hmm. Isn't that nice? But uh, I don't even remember what I was going to... Oh, like, this is the kind of movie where I expected her to, uh, you know, kind of be the princess who's like, not like the other girls. Like, while all the other girls were 
sewing dresses and talking about boys like I was in the courtyard training with a sword. Sure. She didn't do that. No. She was just a girl. And I kind of like that. Yeah. Um, Because I think a lot of times movies tend to go like, okay, well, we need to explain why she was able to like do what these other girls weren't able to do and why she's you know, stronger or more prepared or is like, you know, she trained so she could fight this dragon where it's like, no, no it doesn't matter. She just she had should, to learn as she, she went. Yeah, she just learned as she went and she figured it out and it worked out. And yeah. I, and, you know, I kind of like that. It wasn't uh, trying to overcomplicate things. It was very simple and a uh, decent time. Yeah, too many movies are like, wow, how'd you learn how to hotwire that car? Like, huh, I got seven brothers. Like, can't you not just learn it on her own? Why does she <laughs> always have to have some dude that taught her? All right, cool. I'm glad you watched it because, you know, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, well, I saw a new release just hours before I got here. Wonderful. I saw Werewolves. I know you were super excited for this I one. I was because, you know, this this trailer was before The Apprentice and then it wasn't online. Everybody I tried to tell thought I was crazy. I But it finally came out. It's a weird time. This is not a December release. Why did this not come out a week early, like put this against Moana too, maybe I don't know. Uh, not that it's not going to do good no matter what. This was in theater eight, the smallest theater. Mm-hmm. Uh, like this theater has four rows. That's how small it is. So they didn't have a, they didn't expect much from it, and you shouldn't either because it's <laughs> not very good. Um, it is. It's just a fun premise of there was a supermoon. Anybody who was in the moonlight turned into a werewolf. It was chaos. Well, it lasts for, you know, 8 to 12 hours, however long the the night is. Um, and then here comes the next supermoon. It's a year later. People are boarding up their houses. They're being taken on buses to special areas. Everybody's preparing. And Frank Grillo is part of a scientist team. Because when you think scientists, you think Frank Grillo. Frank Grillo. Yeah. Uh, and they have like four volunteers who were all first year or one year one or something like that. Like they turned into werewolves before, but then they weren't killed and, uh, they're, uh, gonna let them get exposed to the moon because they have a special spray. They call it moon screen and it's a, <laughs> it's a spray they spray them all down with and it seems to work for about an hour and then they turn into werewolves anyways and they break loose and it's all hell uh, hell well, goes loose do you think that if they reapplied it yes every hour and that, it and was that's gonna the be fine whole thing they go to apply it again but the werewolf grabs it and breaks the machine it there's so much dumb fucking logic like why do you only have one machine that is administering this? Why doesn't each werewolf have their own squirt gun of uh, moon screen? Why isn't there? There's like a button on the outside of the cage that if it gets shot, it just opens the door that any even non werewolf person could just reach through and push. They don't strap them down. They put collars on them. But like these are the dumbest scientists at all. And, the, and they the, the the it's in like a. A stadium, so it has an open, uh, sure. you know, a ceiling that opens, and they're like, "Close it!" They're transforming, and of course, it gets jammed. They don't explain why it got jammed. It's not like a werewolf threw something up there, <laughs> a bone, yeah, of- something. <laughs> you know, it, they don't explain it all. I mean, there's, it's it's so kind of poorly made. There's a scene where Frank Grillo and a scientist are in a hallway, and they're like, "We got to go save my sister-in-law," and they run down the hallway. There's like a flash of light, and then they're in cars already driving to it. There's it's the worst, hardest cut to mm. something else. Like we we didn't shoot any of that, or it looked like shit. Fuck it. Just we know they got out of the facility. <laughs> they're in a car, and so this is very much like the purge. Yeah, and the, the, one of the annoying things is like the, there's a neighbor who's gun crazy, and he uh, is excited for the werewolves to come and try to break into his house, and then of course a little bit of sun, a little bit, little bit of moon gets on him. He turns into it. So he becomes this bloodthirsty werewolf and tries to attack the neighbor who is, uh, Frank Grillo's sister-in-law and niece. His brother was married to her. He died before. We don't know if he died in the werewolf attacks. Did he turn into a werewolf and get killed? Was he killed in war? We just know he's dead and Frank okay. is taking care of him. So this neighbor who was all gung-ho about killing werewolves now suddenly wants to murder these people. Okay, you turn into a werewolf, you're a bloodthirsty monster. Can't control yourself. Sure. But at the end, Frank Grillo is trying to protect them. This is the bad the neighbor werewolf is outside, and he's like, 
we only we got 15 minutes till sunrise. I gotta I gotta stall him and allows himself to get turned into a werewolf, very much like 30 days of night. Sure. You know, you gotta become the thing to defeat the thing. Uh but it's, it's, it's 15 minutes. You can't hold off for 15 minutes. If it was an hour, sure, I get it. So he turns into a werewolf, but he's a good guy werewolf. It seems to turn everybody into bloodthirsty monsters, which after he defeats the neighbor. Because the does, only thing more powerful than the moon is the power of love. And that's ben. how they, they like he's coming after him eventually. Oh, it's overtaken him. And then she's showing a picture. Look, this is your brother. You know who I am. Don't kill us. And he does stop. <laughs> and just and licks then, the face. And then, of course, they don't show you the transformation of him back into human. It's just like him as a werewolf. Look outside. The sun's rising. Cut back to him. He's already a person again. I'd say the transformation. Is he naked? He is. Okay. No, he had pants on because the werewolf had pants. Oh. And I didn't notice it, but it's, it's just my uh, my roommate mentioned it. When they have the guys in prison, they have these huge collars because when they transform, their necks are really, really big. Right. So then when you see Frank Grillo turn into a werewolf, he still has his dog tags on, but they're hanging naturally as if they were made for his werewolf body. <laughs> when if th- Those would be six feet long on yeah. his regular human body. So I guess those change with you. Mm. Um, the, some of the effects aren't, aren't bad, especially the transforming. Um, some of the gore isn't bad, but if you're going to be rated R, go nuts. Someone gets their face bitten off, but that's about it. There's, there's some, some blood splatter, but this should have been, this should have been fucking cool. And it's only year two, but they treat it as if they're in the apocalypse. And I feel like society hasn't broken down it at all. Mm Mm-hmm. Th- we should be able to handle this better. And they've had a year to prepare. And they like have the, a year to the prepare. The Supermoon showed up and they were like, okay, we know we have a year to let you. Yeah. And it, it just, if this was something that happened every month, now every full moon, every month is a Supermoon. And this happened every single month. That's a lot scarier. You're living in a time where within 30 days, you could die. You got a whole year. I'm putting off preparing for that werewolf thing. All year. <laughs> it, it's it's just a, it's a fun, stupid, silly concept that I had a good time watching, even though it did get a little boring in the middle. Um, but it's one of those feels like a video game movie where mm. they upgrade to get different guns. They have different, you know, eye drops for their eyes so they can look at the moon um, and not... Uh, not change. There's stealth parts where they had to sneak around a bunch of werewolves just in the street. It just felt very much like a video game. Uh, Maybe you've just been playing too many video games. Which is funny because I have not at all. It just it felt so basic. And uh, not good, but, you know, give it 20 years and turn it into a prestige television show. You know, maybe we can make some make make this good. All right, Ben, start typing it up. I'll do it. The whole time I'm just like, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's stupid. Because they, they don't really explain if it was you have a certain blood type or genetic disorder, you turn into it. It's everybody does. Mm. So that first night had to have been fucking crazy. And I don't know why we're starting on night on year two when that first one would have been a lot of fun. I'm guessing we don't see it. But is there any chance there's like a scene in the opening scene or whatever where the supermoon first shows up where there's like a woman walking with a stroller and then like is there a mini baby werewolf or do you have to be over 18 for it to yeah, affect you it's like they don't explain that either but there is a part where after their stealth part to get into this bodega um because their spray has overheated so they got to mm-hmm. put it in a cooler you know it's what? It's, it's just a video game thing oh no well, our, our healing thing doesn't work you have a timer to get to into the bodega there is a little girl werewolf like eating a cat She's not, but she still like has her normal hair and is still wearing the dress and just kind of has like a little bit of a snout and some claws. So it's like as the, if the, she's the wolf from Little Red Riding Hood and just showed up in this movie. <laughs> kind of, this... it, it, it's it. She looks like she's in mid transformation, but the transformation of these people are pretty quick. So I don't know. Is that what happens to children, or did they just not want to do a? If they did a full werewolf, but it was small, it would look kind of silly. I, I'm not sure, but got it. Bad movie, uh, but I still had a good time. Of course, you did. <laughs> got anything else? Yeah, uh, I watched another movie on Netflix, uh, a little bit more current than Damsel. I watched Anna Kendrick's new film, Woman of the Hour. Nice. Uh, nice. Have you seen this yet? Yeah, I did. Did we talk about it on here? And I've just forgotten. Uh, probably. 
or it could have been one of those with like, yeah, I saw it. It's good. Let's move on. Oh, okay. Well, I saw it. It's good. Yeah. And we can move. On. <laughs> no, I think, uh, you know, it's a uh, interesting story. It's fucked up. Uh, doing research like during the movie because, you know, you can't help yourself. We're like, I got to know like yeah. what this guy's deal is. Uh, I talked about it for 33 seconds. Got it. Um, like learning like the movie doesn't even scratch the surface of like all the fucked up oh, things yeah. this guy did. Yeah. Uh, just really not fun to read. Uh, and I, you know, appreciate what, what the movie had to say in all of its subtle ways. I think from a, you know, uh, a first directorial effort out the gate, I think she did a great job um, l- looking into it. All the game show stuff like didn't happen like it did in yeah. the real world. Like she didn't change the question. She mm-hmm. wasn't sad. Like she, you know, played it straight. It, uh, bachelor number three was actually bachelor number one and all that yeah. stuff. Um, but all the stuff that happened like outside the game, I guess, apparently was relatively uh, historically accurate. Yeah. Um, like with the murder, uh, with the victims and all that stuff. And just uh, I was I was pretty impressed. Hour and a half. It's simple. It moves quick. Um, and you know, well acted. Uh, I liked a lot of the directing choices of just like, you know, um, the the runaway where, you know, they're in the car and the camera pans over and she's in there and it follows him mm-hmm. and he like goes to the bathroom and then it just pants back out and you see the car door <laughs> open. <laughs> and it's like, just so, things like that. There's yeah. a lot of like really great shots that are like so... Like the skylight when she's being that woman, the artist yeah. being attacked. Yeah. It's all like nothing flashy, but just well station camera work yeah. and i i think because you're not watching a fight scene you're watching someone get murdered yeah and sometimes just holding and lingering on it is mm-hmm. worse and just slow pants and stuff mm-hmm. but like what's in the shot is all really well done so i think uh she did a good job she did a great job and i think uh, i would very much like to see what she does next mm-hmm. with uh you know does she you know, she comes from a musical background does she do a musical does she like keep sort of in this thriller like is she gonna well, she kind of railroad herself into these more dramatic things. Or was like, no, what? I'm going to do uh, a comedy this time. Yeah. I'd like to see whatever she does next. I like to see it because I think she has a lot of potential. Yeah, absolutely. As a director, obviously, it has yeah. uh, potential as an actress because she's great. You, you know the victim that gets away at the end. Did you notice her hand? <laughs> well, she. Uh, it was one of those things where like it. All the shots where it was in there was like so quick. I, but at one point, I turned to my wife and was like, "Does she have a fucked up hand?" Yeah, and she was like, "Yeah." I was like, "Okay." Yeah, <laughs> I was just imagining it. I, I, at first, it's like, "Oh, did they? Was this victim have some sort of deformed hand?" Nope. I'm like, no, this is just the actress, and they just hired for it. They don't draw attention to it. And like, oh, okay, cool. Yep. Yeah, I, it's just one of those things of you know, I just like to know. You yeah, know? and I think, uh, I think it also kind of helps from a like victim standpoint not mm-hmm. to like be gross about it but yeah. just like oh she has this thing that makes her insecure and here i am with this camera telling her like oh you're, you're so beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. and it'll also make her more more likely uh easier to um take advantage take, of because yeah. she like has one less hand or sure. whatever yeah um but i but yes i i, I like that they didn't draw attention to mm-hmm. it or anything like that they just like let her be the actress and uh, I thought she was great. And I loved how she, like, had the wherewithal to, like, get away. Yeah. Or just, like, to, trick him. To, to, to trick him. on him yeah. and be like, oh, this is a little embarrassing yeah. for me. Please don't tell anybody about this. And, <laughs> and we'll just, like, go have a nice meal together. Yeah. I watched this with my – because I told you my parents uh, – we're here this weekend and we were looking for something to watch because actually the night before we watched Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. So I watched Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice again. Ooh, sorry. Uh, honestly, better the second time because yeah. like I wasn't looking at it through a critical view. So sure. I'm just like, I'm just here to just relax. And it, it flew by. Right. Like Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice goes by quick. Well, when you stuff it with that much sort of like plot and motivation for, for people, it's going to chug along. <laughs> but... Anyway, my parents, their review of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, eh, it was fine. You know, didn't do anything for them. A little disappointing. Uh, But Woman of the Hour, I'm going to give a B plus. I really liked it. Um, And I think I had another point to make, but I don't care anymore. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Cool. I recommend. I I... I remember what I was going to say. And we can cover this. Uh, 
but I was watching when I was watching the movie with my wife. Obviously, she's you know coming from a female perspective. She's just like, oh, Jesus Christ, and like they, certain things frustrated her. Uh, but when she said when the runaway was like going like, oh, this is really embarrassing for me. Mm-hmm. Like, can we just go back to your place? She's like, oh, she's so smart. Like she was just like <laughs> so rooting for this girl. Just yeah. like way to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was very fun to watch like another person have visceral reactions to a, a film. Yeah. And if you like the the guy who plays the killer, he's in Station Eleven. He's the bad guy in that. Oh, right. All right. So I watch. I'm gonna do a twofer real quick. Cool. Uh, there is a Watchmen animated movie mm-hmm. on HBO. It's just part one. So it ends off where uh, Rorschach gets captured by the police okay. after being set up for Moloch's death. Um, it, it's funny watching this because. When it was just a comic book, everyone said, it's unfilmable. You Mm -hmm. cannot turn this into a movie. It just doesn't work. And then Zack Snyder uh, gave it the old college try, and I think he's very successful. I really, really like Watchmen. Yeah. The movie had great reviews, made money. And and, By all accounts, seemed to be a success. And I don't care about the squid. As as someone who loves squids, I think this is a better ending. I think it just, it makes more sense. So watching the animated version, it I feel like maybe it would be a bit better if his didn't exist because it borrows a lot from it. And I know okay. he's just adapting the comic, but you can feel the editing and how to combine information. You don't have to shoot every single panel. I think he was, they were very helped by having... Zack Snyder's as a blueprint, but it is being more faithful. I know they're <laughs> going to do the squid. It's funny you're saying Zack Snyder's is the blueprint, but it's like Zack Snyder's blueprint was the guy. So it's a blueprint or a blueprint. Yeah, that. sure. It's like, but you could look at a comic book and think of how you're going to shoot every sort of thing and it could come out different with every single person. Mm. And I think they looked more towards the movie that like what worked for the movie, what works in the comic book and how can we steal from it? The problem with the animated one is there's like no music that's interesting. It's all just score. Mm-hmm. Um, and Zack Snyder's is very, it's just filled with a lot Great of soundtrack. Like fun pop. His at 99 yeah. Luft Balloons is in it. The Night Watch, the, what, what was it called? The Night Tower. Um, the, uh, all on the Watchtower. All on the Watchtower. Yeah. There's just like really good needle drops throughout the whole thing. And it just kind of gets you through this. One of the best intros, I think, in movies. Oh, yeah. That montage Amazing. with the times they are changing yeah. song. Great stuff. Uh, but the animated movie just doesn't have that. Mm. It's, a, it's a lot more somber and maybe more accurate to the, the comic, but it's it's a little dry. And I don't like Rorschach's voice. I think it's a little too deep. And Dr. Manhattan's... Oh, I thought you were going to say it was too high. It's like, Rorschach's journal. <laughs> no, he's just like really Batman and he's just super, super low. A comedian Um, died in New York. What's that about? Anyway, sorry. uh, But everybody else is pretty good. And I'm, I'm, I'll definitely watch part two, but speaking of DC animated things, watch HBO's the Watchmen starring Regina King. Very true. It's like Watchmen is very lucky to have very good adaptations from it. Mm -hmm. It has a good movie. I mean, obviously, the source material is great. A great sequel that nobody asked for. And now this, as long as they can nail it, I think they will, that you have a great animated movie now. So just kind of like Scott Pilgrim, all the iterations are pretty damn good. So fuck you, Alan Moore. Watch your shit, you know. Let let other people have fun with it. But speaking of DC animated things, uh, Creature Commandos started. The very first thing in the DCU... Under under the guise uh, under the guide of of James Gunn, uh, telling the story of Task Force X, X Task Force X. That's kind of hard to say. Um, not being able to use humans anymore after the whole starfish incident in the Suicide Squad. So they're using monsters now, and they got to go help this uh, this you know Eastern European country. It's always some vague. It's like Cocolopia or something. You know they always make up the most random things. Um, and help them because Cersei or Cersei from uh, Themyscira is coming to fuck people up. And she has like this army of red pill troll neckbeard guys because like they all want to like fuck her and and think. Their whole thing is like, 
What? Themyscira? Why, why does that have to be women only? I think guys should be allowed at the Themyscira. So if we follow Cersei, she'll let us go there. And, you know, um, but of course, they're just pawns for her. Um, yeah, it's fun so far. It's not as beautiful as I expected from seeing the the promo art. Mm-hmm. I thought this would be just like really detailed smooth animation and it's it's better than a lot of the DC DC EU stuff that's been coming out the mm-hmm. crisis on infinite earth like that's all very generic it is elevated from that um i'd say invincible levels when invincible's good yeah. you know when it's really clean it's about there so on the whole, it's better looking than Invincible, but I, I just feel like it was maybe missing something, but I sure. don't care. I think the characters are fun enough. I like to see where this goes. Um, Frankenstein is kind of a big, sad soy boy uh, <laughs> beta, um, but I, I like I like the bride. I like, I don't know her name, but the creature, they're fun. Um, we'll, we'll see. This is... All right. And so... Sorry, this is established. This is canon in, and yeah, in James Gunn universe, the only thing he says nothing's canon until you see it on the screen. But Peacemaker, for the most part, and the Suicide Squad are the only things canon to his. Oh, and maybe Blue Beetle. I think they're bringing him okay. over. So I think he said the only thing in. Um, Peacemaker that is not canon is the last like second when the yeah, Justice yeah. League show up, but they it will be addressed and it will all make sense. Gotcha. And the fun thing about this cartoon show is anybody who does the voice acting will play the live action. Okay, well that's well. my question. So like, they're I'm not necessarily that they're going to make a live action of the animated stuff, but the if animated they need these characters, the animated later stuff on, that happens in this will have direct effect. Well, I mean. They will be canon to any live action thing Got that it. he okay. puts yeah, out. Yeah. So Superman Legacy, or I guess it's not called that anymore. It will. It's all in that same world. So Interesting. You have David Harbour is the Frankenstein. Uh, you have Alan Tudyk is Doctor Phosphorus. Um, the the Weasel is will just be a CGI Weasel. Um, I thought it was. Cersei from Game of Thrones playing the bride, but it's actually, you know, the mom of the sand snakes. Yes. She's, she's the bride. And then Zoe from oh, what's it? after party, you know, um, Sam Richards, Sam Richards yes. girlfriend. Yeah. She plays the creature from the black lagoon okay. character. And then, um, yeah, there's GI robot, but I'm sure he would be a CGI character as well but also what's her face played amanda waller she's back viola davis yes viola davis <laughs> jesus that's what you're here for steve i don't know <laughs> names so she's back frank grillo is uh rick flag senior and they mention about his son being killed and so i mean good week for frank grillo yeah <laughs> but all in all I, i'm enjoying it i'm not sold on his dcu universe yet i'll wait till superman comes out but uh yeah i'm, I'm liking so, it so bad far. flack was dceu EU. james gunn is just DCU. dcu yeah got it okay extended universe and then just universe yeah understood or it's easier to just call it, it's like it's the dcu or the snyder verse all that is just be from Zack snyder pretty much gotcha what a time we were alive when fucking The Flash came out and <laughs> the Justice League came out with Steppenwolf and the shit. God, that movie was bad. Yeah. And you watched a four-hour version of it. And I watched it. it twice because it's great. You're a sick bastard. It's, it's good. It's worth your time. I, but now that that universe doesn't matter anymore, none of them are worth your time. Exactly. I I knew ahead of time that this was going to happen. <laughs> no, it's it's good stuff. I, I I'd even be willing to watch it again. I think it's good. Moving on. Moving on to our main topic. Y2K. How, how far along are we? We talked longer than I thought. 57 minutes. All right. All right. I think we can get this done in 30. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think there's a lot to get deep in. We say that, but you cut to an know. hour and a half later. You yeah. never know. Uh, so Y2K, written and directed by Kyle Mooney from SNL fame. Did he quit 
or did he get fired? No, I think he left on his own. Okay, just wanted to do things. Did, wanted to do Briggs and Bear or something. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know if he, you know, was invited back or just decided to leave. But it, I, I don't think it was like on bad okay. terms or anything like that. So, I just feel like he would work really well with the Please Don't Destroy guys for sure. Uh, yeah, and my wife's least favorite SNL cast member of all time, I think, is Kyle Mooney. Really? Yeah. I never really liked his stuff either. Okay. I saw, like, I appreciated he did things different, and I liked him and Beck Bennett's relationship, because I think those were two guys that, like, you wouldn't expect them to work together, Mm -hmm. but I liked their vibe. That being said, every time Kyle Mooney was in a sketch, I'm like, I don't like what's happening here. All right. Well, uh, I'm sure that extends to this movie, because there's a whole heap in serving of him in this mm-hmm. i thought he would be in maybe one or two scenes but he is kind of like there yeah for a good chunk but the main plot of this it's 1999 it's winter break they're gonna be doing their new year's eve party we got uh, uh the super bad kids uh <laughs> want to yeah. go to a party you got a skinny guy and a big guy and they want to kiss get, girls kiss girls get laid and uh yeah, yeah. And it's a uh, Rachel Zegler is the girl who like she's such a I don't know how old she is but like if you tell like oh she's playing a a, a sophomore in this no mm-hmm. junior and it's like yeah yeah she fits that age if you said oh no she's thirty three like, yeah I could see it as well she just has one of those faces yeah I think uh, she's in her mid twenties but yeah probably definitely looks young um and it's uh you know Y two K happens for real but instead of what we all thought of just like nukes getting launched or all systems go down. There's like the computer oh. virus from the movie virus with Jamie Lee Curtis and it, they start making robots. Uh, and then, you know, it's just kind of like a hilarity and <laughs> apocalypse survival sort of thing. Uh, Steve, I know it was either this or werewolves. I think we probably would have had more fun talking about werewolves because of how much you would have hated it. But what did you think of Y2K? I think Y2K has some issues, but ultimately, I kind of had a good time. Okay. Yeah, I didn't hate it. Um, And the amount of Kyle Mooney didn't deter me from liking this movie, although I think he definitely is in it too much. Uh, But he he didn't bother me. Okay. Um, I didn't like this movie. I think this movie sucks. Okay. (laughs) Uh, I think the first, first act is just... Hey, remember that? Hey, hey, there's some kids doing the Macarena out on the street. Hey, you remember Macarena? Uh, that was pretty popular. Hey, look at this. Look at that. Oh, in 64. You remember that? Oh, Billy Blanks, Tybo. Hey, you remember that? It's just so much of that. And like, why can't period pieces just exist in its time without shoving references down your throat? It. it just, well, I think if this was a drama, they would. But that would just be like boyhood. But like this... As a comedy, it's like part of the joke is like, hey, you know, nudging your buddy like, oh, yeah, that time we did, you know, play Tamagotchis like that. What a silly, funny thing that that we were into at the time. So like the references are the joke in a sense. It's such low hanging fruit. And at least it does it better than the 430 movie where they go like, hey, look at this thing of this time. I bet in the future it totally wouldn't do this and it'd be a a flip on whatever it is. It's a lot more subtle in this, but it's still just so in your face at times. I don't know. I think it's, I mean, I get what you're saying, but at at the same time, I think it's just world. Because there's you watch so many movies, it's like, this takes place in the 70s, but you see like a... 2018 Chevy Malibu or whatever in the sure. corner, like you know, they we we build the world by like having the things that were the time. Like I was looking at the clothes, and I didn't even notice on the main kid he had like real baggy pants, mm-hmm. which like oh yeah, yeah. their baggy pants oh, were yeah. in at the time. Jinko jeans, you know, maybe. It... <laughs> yeah, like the the girl who likes uh, Limp Biscuit, she had those like big ball chain necklaces. Mm-hmm. Everybody in high school wore. So this is like the perfect movie for me. I was like one year. I was a senior in '99. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and I was in fifth grade, I think. I don't remember. But. <laughs> so you weren't even worried about computers coming after you. Nope. Uh, so, like, all the references and stuff, I get them, you know? It, yeah. it was, it, they do a good job of of making it seem like that time. I just wish they didn't draw so much attention to it. I think you're overthinking it, but okay, fair enough. Um, I think this movie is not very funny. 
I think there's like two jokes that made me laugh and they're like the perfect Steve jokes. It's <laughs> people off screen. Yes, I'm so glad you brought this up. People off screen saying something funny. And God. it happens twice and it's the two times I laugh. Okay. <laughs> um, that that of just yeah. like oh I guess he drinks piss now <laughs> so funny I really I don't remember what the second one was I mean well, I was like oh Fred Durst you suck yeah so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're making Fred, fun of Fred Durst but uh, yeah my favorite one was uh, you know the the popular guy at the, whose house party it was he turns to the main kid and she's like who even the who the fuck are you uh, who are you even? And someone in the background just goes, oh, that's piss now. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, oh, so funny. Those are the best jokes because like they are written after the fact. You can think on it. They, yeah. It was just something that was needed for that time. But jokes actually written for the movie, I didn't really love. Mm-hmm. Um, I, also, the, the thing I liked the most, love the robots. I thought they were really fun looking. I'm, yeah. The practical stuff, especially when they get back to the school and they have the hive mind there, that's mm-hmm. a big practical set and big clunky robots walking around. That's a whole lot of fun. Yeah. But it's in a movie uh, like, I think the greatest uh, or the most disservice thing that they do is they kill the friend. They Oh, 100%. They, this is where the movie I think flounders. Uh, because I actually think the first like act of this movie it's pretty good because it's like just a straight like teen comedy trying to get laid cracking sure. jokes with your best buddy very you know super bad ask of um and you know the two nerds who hang out like oh i just want to go to the party and i think uh the hunt for the wilder people kid yeah uh whose name deadpool I, 2 kid deadpool 2 kid i think he's very funny in this yeah. i think he but he, he's, he's healing he's, people he's just definitely have to say lines and they sound funny yeah definitely the uh the comedic relief of the movie, mm-hmm. him doing the big thong song yeah. portion. I really liked that scene. I thought it was fun. And just like my, you know, as a kid or a teen, that's your dream to go to a party and just like steal and the show yeah. and kill it. And just like being kind of the fat, the fat kid. But like all these girls are just like, look how confident he is. And mm-hmm. he's making out with them. Like I just loved yeah. all that stuff. I think all that really works. And then when you introduce the robots and it kind of flounders, uh, you know, you lose it. It's cool that the movie decided, hey, we're going to throw you a curveball. This guy who you think is going to be here the whole movie, we're killing him. Yeah. I can respect that. Sure. But then you team your main kid up with these other two, like, hip-hop kids. That you don't even like. Who, like, you don't like. You, they don't have much personality. And you, like, have scenes where they're kind of bonding. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't matter because one of them dies. And the other one, like, gets to meet Fred Durst. <laughs> yeah. Which is, like, a fun cameo. Sure. Uh, and I like that he was like willing to take the joke of just like, oh, uh, you know, they're calling him like, oh, you guys are the greatest rock band in the world mm-hmm. or whatever. We're like, everyone makes fun of Limp Bizkit yeah. now. Um, but it, so there's things that I think work here, but killing off, uh, Deadpool 2 kid was yeah. a mistake. He, he should have been there to crack jokes. And then you also had the, the, um, the bully character from yeah. that kid who's like, in everything now, uh, yeah. yeah, the the long haired kid, uh, Stranger Things, right? Stranger Things, uh, a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just playing like the kind of the stoner bully character. Um, I think he had some funny lines, yeah. and then he was killed off thirty seconds after that kid. So you lose both your comedic reliefs. Yeah. I mean, him going like, oh, look at, the, <laughs> look at that, rail. look at this yeah. rail for me to and then instantly falling, cracking his skull open and yes. dying. Very funny. That's a funny joke, but I think it it's not worth losing that character because yeah. that's the, in an, in a typical movie he's the asshole the whole time. the The girl character who is his friend would confront him about being such a piece of shit to her the yeah. whole time. Those characters grow together they throughout grow, the movie, and then he sacrifices himself yeah. to you know that's uh, just a hundred percent. That's what movies do. So it's either if you want that joke of him dying right there, you got to save Hunt from the Wild, Wilder people. Yeah. I uh, yeah I you lose your two best comedians you know thirty minutes into the movie and then you just have an hour left of this adventure of them walking through the woods, um, and that guy the the other guy who's like, you know a real snob about the music and his little free free flowing rhymes is that supposed to be funny because i i was just embarrassed yeah i think you take that character who or you have those if let's say you kill off the two funny guys and so now you have these two hip-hop kids 
these two have to be, I think, the both the funny characters, mm-hmm. well, because they're constantly battling with each other. And I don't mean like hip hop battling, but just yeah. uh, going back and forth because you already have the romance angle with the other two. So you're rooting for their relationship to work or whatever and having to deal with her ex or her hot ex-boyfriend who's also a hippie character yeah. or whatever. Um, but then you have you get to the end where these two characters are both alive. They have Fred Durst. Fred Durst goes up on that stage at the end and is like, hey guys, we need to rise up and not take and then like one of the robots kills Fred Durst instantly and it's like, oh, oh no. Now I have to And then that's when that kid who is real pretentious gets up. And he starts doing hip hop, yeah. And then when the, and then hip hop saves America or what? Sure. You know, something silly like that, or, or, or like you, it distracts the robots enough to where they're able to like put in the virus and save the day. Yeah. But you don't do anything interesting with that. You just have this girl have a, such an emotional connection to Fred Durst, but nothing really coming of that either. No. Um, yeah, or like after Fred Durst dies and that kid steps up and like I got this, and he goes through this whole thing and then it stops and you hear another voice like I didn't like that at all, you know <laughs> something, and then and then it's like that's another joke, but it just feels like they're taking almost the easy jokes mm-hmm. at the sacrificing of building actual characters that you care about. Yeah, because and the other thing I think that is a problem with this movie is. You know, there is this Y2K robot program villain thing. You know, it has the eye. It's very like, oh, what's this like crazy symbol? And the robot's even speaking to them like, look at you dumb fuckers. You're never going to be able to break through my firewall, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, so that's a a human who's like in this program fucking with them or something. Sure. But no, that's just like the robot's personality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it doesn't say like really how this thing comes about. It's just... Y two K. It mm-hmm. just went to zero, and the robots decided to yeah, rise they kept up. It was the it was the AI program, and it became sentient. Like, but what AI program? Yeah, that wasn't what Y two K was. It was about computers shutting down, and then not having the fail safe systems, and then all the nukes were going to launch, yeah. and we were all going to die. Planes it, were going to come out of the sky. Yeah, and, I it, mean, which they kind which of they do. Yeah, you know, but it wasn't about robots. And a robot uprising. Yeah. So we get that. It wasn't kind of Judgment Day. Yeah. But then the, the other thing was the robot's plan was to like take over this town and then go to other towns. Yeah. Where it just seems like. Why did it start here? Why did it, Yeah. Why did it start here? Um, and, you know, Hunt for the Water People was able to sort of like destroy one of these small. It never seems like the robots, they acquired more tech. And got bigger, but they didn't necessarily get stronger. Yeah. You know, they just were able, like, I guess, to take a little bit more damage. But you could throw water on them and they would break. Or you mm-hmm. could just hit them with a thing and their stuff would fall off. Because they're not really secured by much with no. other than wires. Um, but I do like how all the robots looked. I think from a practical effects standpoint, they did look good. Um, and then his his own personal computer shows up. And they kidnap him and they like learn. I thought he was going to be their buddy. Yeah. Like missed opportunity there. Yeah. It's like, I don't, I like, I don't hate humans. You and me, we've done so much together. Look at all the porn we've watched. You, you've shown me humans are capable of yeah. compassion or the something. The relationship, like that. The, 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 the DMs that you have with this girl showed me that you weren't so bad. You weren't the type of person who was looking up beheading videos and stuff. You were, you were a good person. Mm-hmm. And then, then now you got a fun, robot sidekick yeah it's just so filled with that should, that like, you kill kyle mooney off immediately and then you have kyle mooney do a silly voice to the robot and that's yes. how he can keep himself yes. in there or they could have been since he was in the video store like he has all these bootleg movies and versions that you can't get anywhere and and then like this is what i got got off the net and it's some some cd rom that he's oh i'm gonna watch this later i don't know what it is and that is the catalyst for why it started here he downloaded some terrible virus then when his computer did the y2k it was the hive mind you know right Mm -hmm. at at the beginning it's like there's they don't set up these bad guys very well besides the the over looming threat of y2k but if it was something from him i think that would work yeah i uh, yeah i just once again, wish that this kind of movie had, you know, a little bit more character growth or like a little bit more detail because it was definitely not concerned with, uh, you know, emotional or uh, character arcs in mm-hmm. any real sense. 
other than like will the guy get the girl at the yeah. end will he kiss her as they're sledding down the hill in a you know porta potty filled with shit yeah <laughs> god because <laughs> that was my whole thing is like i you guys have to realize you're in a porta potty now like this isn't the time to just be emotionally like looking like staring and loving into each other's eyes because if you like open your mouth to make out what? just it's all going in there and, and a giant robot's attacking you don't jump behind the half inch thick plastic yeah you container. just saw it cut off a dude's head and yeah and yeah whatever uh movie stuff um but yeah you know not having any sort of like world building or sense of like what any of this robot thing is and just also instantly developing the tech and this is just movie bullshit so it's, it's fine but like developing the tech instantly to also uh assimilate human beings yeah into mm-hmm. the robot hive mind and stuff just yep. real real silly um i would say i will say their solution to get the plug in is like oh they had this condom for so long and they mm-hmm. just carried around with them that that's going to protect them from getting shocked I did like that. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, you know, all your complaints are valid. All my complaints are valid. Uh, this movie, I wouldn't say is good. I'm just saying I think I had a good time with it. Um, and the main thing I think, the reason I had a good time with it, I think if you gave you and I $15 million to mm-hmm. make a movie, this is the kind of shit you and I would make. Yeah, probably. Uh, a comedy with sci-fi horror elements to it. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a Ben and Steve special. Like, if we were talented enough to make a film that had practical sci-fi effects yeah. with quality jokes, because there's some in here. There's some. This, I think this is the movie we would make. This would be our directorial debut. I can see that, yeah. In, a, in, a, in another world. And, would, and I would do all the very obvious, you know, hey look at that nostalgia thing. I, I totally would. I'd fill it <laughs> and then be like, no. You guys remember Bob Dole? I, I don't know. Is that a 90s thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Bob, no, no, Bob Dole. That was more 80s, right? No, Bob Dole went up against George W. Bush. So oh. that was 2000s. Because oh. it was Al Gore versus, um, uh, versus Bush. Yeah. Bush won. And then it was Bob Dole versus Bush. And then Bush won. And then Obama. Bob Dole was after Gore? Yeah. I mean, I never followed politics. I was too young to follow politics yeah, at the time. Bob, but Bob Dole was a very old man. I know Bob Dole was like the guy. For... He was, yeah, he was the guy. It was Bush versus Dole. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I, watching this movie, I walked out of it kind of just going like, man, you know, it's it's dumb. It's not very good. But this is like... You know, a young filmmaker's, yeah. you know, first but, try. There, there's charm to this movie, and I, I think. I've heard his other movie, Brigsby Bear, is pretty good. Uh-huh. And if this is his, his second movie, normally, like, filmmakers, they start getting better and better yeah. as they go. And I I haven't seen Br- Brigsby Bear, so I don't know if it is any good. But this this feels like a first movie. Yeah. Testing the waters, getting your feet wet, learning how Trying to do things, different things. And then finding your voice as you as you move on. Yeah. But this is just... I mean, Kyle Moon doesn't strike me as a kind of writer director that is making movies to like teach you something or like be about anything. Sure. But I think this movie does kind of fit in that same wheelhouse uh nowhere near as funny but of like the hot rod because sort of yeah. thing where it's like kind of weird, kind mm-hmm. of silly, yeah. c- clearly stupid, but at least hot rod had like j- tons of jokes yeah. uh, or this one kind of leans more into the like sci-fi horror stuff or, you know, I think it kind of fits into the realm of uh, legend of foggy mountain. But yeah. once again, nowhere near as funny. Yeah. I think it, it is funny. It's like the people who do the digital things on SNL, they both had movies that are kind of flops, but, as we look back on them, they will be it, well, like everybody loves Hot Rod now, but at the yeah. time, nobody gave a Call fuck. Classic, about it. but Foggy Mountain that will get there. Just give it a few more years. I hope so. Will appreciate it. Um, I don't think people will come back to this film. I don't yeah. think this will necessarily be a cult classic. No. Um, mainly because I think Kyle Mooney's in it too much. Uh, a little too much. Yeah, <laughs> he just loves like his jokes of just you know making a joke and then laughing and just kind of making a face. It's like, nah, you gotta gotta learn when to cut yourself off. But I I don't blame he him. He cut his own head off. I would do that to myself too. It's like, oh, I'm directing this and I'm I'm gonna die. I'm You're gonna, gonna die. make a really cool yeah. head of me. 
uh, I could see Cobb Mooney having that head of his somewhere oh. in his house. <laughs> Wouldn't you keep yours? Of course. Maybe in a box. Yeah, I wouldn't closet. have it like on display yeah. per se, but not until you've made like six or seven movies, then you could have your room of all your stuff. Mm-hmm. Then you could put it out. If it's your first movie and you have that on your wall, you look like a psycho. Did you have any feeling about seeing uh, Alicia Silverstone and Tim Deerdecker? I Heidecker, sorry. I like Alicia Silverstone. Makes sense. 90s actress it's you know 25 years later now she plays a mom okay who's the male equivalent of that oh let's get tim heidecker no he's he wasn't relevant until the late 2000s you know um Mm -hmm. so i feel like that's just more of a friend casting sure i could see like their buddies outside of this and so i was trying to think like who who would be a better casting who's who's a 90s actor ben savage no or like Jason Priestley from Beverly Hills 90210. Okay. Why not? You know, it's like that. Why makes... 2K not? <laughs> oh. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I was going to say like uh, Y2K more like why so gay, but <laughs> no, not no, even good. No. Not even good. Uh, but so, yeah, Tim Heidecker, it just, it seemed like it's stunt casting. Mm-hmm. Look, the 90s, the 90s, the 90s. And then you put someone in there who's not from the 90s. Were you a fan of? Oh, Limp Biscuit. Oh, uh, not really. Not really. Um, they were they were a joke at that time. Okay. Like, uh, I think metalheads could appreciate um, the actual musicians, but we all still made fun of Limp Biscuit. Mm. Pe- people liked him for sure, uh, but no, he was a joke. And but I did see him live. Uh, oh. He even mentions when he's on stage talking. He's like, "There's one time at the Family Values tour. I went to that tour when it came through Omaha, and so it was it was Orgy opened, which we didn't know. Like they sounded like shit, and then but we got their CD anyways. I'm like, oh, this is a fucking good ass album. But it was the same band. Didn't even sound similar. Second was Ice Cube. Oh. I don't know why Ice Cube was there? Very strange. Uh, then it was... Did you like Ice Cube? Yeah, well, Ice, it was fun. Yeah. Uh, he had a big statue of his head with like an Abraham Lincoln hat on. Um, <laughs> and then it was Limp Bizkit, and that pit was so fucking scary. It was just... Oh, you were sea- in the pit? No, no, no. Oh. No, no, no. My, my frail little body. <laughs> I It was in a big enough stadium that it had seating. Okay. And so I had friends who were like, oh, I want to get down there. I was like, absolutely not. Because there was someone who... The main reason I was there, and I'll get to that, I wanted to see it. So I stayed back. But watching the pit was just this undulating sea of people. Very scary. And then it was technically the headliner, the main person, but they had to go second to last. Get to that. It was corn. Okay. And I was like, like, damn, if Limbus gets like that, corn's going to be crazy. But I think people were t- a little tired and it wasn't nearly as bad. And then the second headliner that had to go second because of all the pyrotechnics was Rammstein. And that's what I was there for. You know, he had like fucking giant dildo flamethrowers and just just tons of effects, you know, fire and water and blood. It was just really fun to watch. And you could just feel the heat from so far. I can't imagine being on the stage performing with all that. But that was a good fucking show. It was one of the, the best I've ever been to. Do you like Rammstein music or you just yeah. like the well it's it's a German band and it's just like really heavy. Okay. Um you've you've heard it before, trust me. Sure. Um and yeah, I do, but it's not like like I kept up with them or, or anything. You like just that. knew it was gonna be a yeah. heck of a show. I, I was and you're there like, for Rammstein. I don't give a fuck about corn, I don't give a fuck about Limp Biscuit. Um and but it's it's nice to see like oh all these kind of people really endured through time except for orgy i don't think they really had a second album but you know like saying i saw corn and limp biscuit in their prime that that was pretty cool mm. all right two last things okay i want to talk about y2k um one just a little side note i don't like when movies do this and lots of movies do it but you have uh, a beloved character, and when I say beloved, I mean we only knew him for 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh, but Hunt for the Little People, he dies, but he has a mom character. Yeah. The mom character shows up at the end and is just kind of like, Brad, I forget the guy the character's yeah. name, and just like, he didn't make it. And the mom's just like, huh. Oh. And they hug. Yeah. And that's it. She should be devastated. And I, I really it, thought they were she was gonna die. Like fighting back, so they wouldn't even have to have that conversation. Yeah. Or 
I don't know. It just it bothered me that yeah. you you have a just no reaction or no real reaction. Um, Agreed. The other thing, maybe I missed it, but what was the deal with like the at, the wrestlers? But they were making like figurines of the that oh, 70s show characters because kelso was the man and it's like they wanted to be like kelso they wanted to be hot and cool and get the chicks yeah but they made the entire but cast. they made the whole cast i yeah. guess that's what they do like they make the cast they like the show i'm okay with like them having a hobby i just wish they kind of like why did this yeah why is this your thing and especially it... after like um who plays kelso uh oh um Fuck. Ashton Kutcher. Well, oh yeah, sorry. I was thinking of the other guy in prison. Oh yeah, but it's like because him and Mila Kunis have like offered their support of Danny Masterson, people kind of don't really like him anymore. So now seeing like, oh, Kelso, he's the man. Like, well, eh, yeah, that doesn't, you know, age very well, but whatever. Yeah, I mean... I just wish they did something with that figure too, other than just kind of sure. like had it with him. Yeah. This is something. We need something to connect the circuit. Oh, use this. Yeah. I thought she was like, she couldn't reach. She was going to use his sure. uh, action figure, maybe put the, like the action figure would like hold the, the device or something. Sure. Yeah. And they would use the rubber to protect him. I don't know. It just, it just felt like there was always this thing that he had with him. And then it's just like, oh, well, we just put it on the guy's grave five years later. Yeah. Um, yeah why did it take you so long? Like, wait, wait till we're done with college. Then I'm not done using the Kelso toy. I needed to get me through college. Then I'll put it on. Yeah. I, I just wish they kind of did sure. something with that or explained a little bit more. Of, but let's but, let's talk about our leads. Okay. What a sad sack. This kid is so boring. I know that. You, I think he's got great dork face yeah he in terms looks of, great for this role and i know that's probably why they hired him like you fit perfectly but he had nothing he had no charisma he w- didn't even seem to like really be all that friendly with his friend he just seemed to be there and mm-hmm. i think he was the wrong choice yeah i can see that and you know you know the trope of the sort of slightly unattractive dorky kid getting the hot girl like yeah it's nothing new like we knew it was gonna happen uh and it in the early scenes i kind of liked their chemistry Mm -hmm. i think it you know it worked them being like lab partners essentially or whatever but then like once the robot stuff happening and he's like kind of a jerk and she's like because i thought she was just kind of the uh, a pretty girl who like doesn't mind talking to the nerds, yeah, but then she's was, just nice to him. Yeah, just nice to him. But then as the movie goes on, it kind of just seems like, oh no, she's just a popular girl. Yeah, and you know, obviously she's like, you know, I'm I'm multi, I, I I'm a nice person. And then it's like, what's my name? Mm-hmm. I've gone to school with you for ten years. Yeah, it's like, oh, well, I don't remember. It's just like, oh, I I don't know. I just wish, like, I I just felt like the back half of the movie, their relationship didn't feel like earned or real, but I like their stuff in the beginning. Yeah. It, it's been done before, but you, I expected it to be, we were best friends growing up. We were next door neighbors, but then after freshman year, puberty hit and she got really hot and mm-hmm. left me behind, yeah. you know? Yeah. She's still cool with me, but she kind of advanced, but it's like, no, they only knew each other because they were in class together and they, you know, she he helped her out with homework or or whatever they yeah. didn't have like a bond that was super duper close she just seemed like a nice person who would talk to anybody yeah who was sitting in his seat instead of him would have had that same relationship yeah so that would have been funny if like he goes in for the kiss and she's like whoa who what do you think this is just because we're going through a traumatic event doesn't mean you get to kiss me yeah kind of a bummer of an ending so i could see why they don't do that i mean that's kind of uh, did you ever see, you saw um the to do list with Aubrey Plaza? Uh, Aubrey Plaza, the to do list where she's like a she's in high school and no, she's like I want to check didn't. off all these sexual things before I no. get to college. No, yeah, it's a pretty it's pretty good. Okay, um, it's a fun like sex comedy thing. Oh yeah, doesn't um, she have a thing of just like considering anal and being like, well, I don't know about yeah, that. And he crosses yeah. it off. Then. Uh, but. <laughs> At the end of the movie, because there's like the dorky character by who plays uh, is by um I want to say Jimmy Simpson, but that's not it. He's the the kid from um uh young Neil 
from Scott Pilgrim. Okay. That that guy. Yeah. He's kind of like the dorky character in that movie who's just like her friend. And there's the hot guy who she wants to hook up. Like she wants to lose her virginity to. And then it get, like gets the other movie. And then it's just, you know, she has a chance to, I think, like be with the dorky guy. And she's like, no, I'm going to bang the hot guy. <laughs> it's like, just like, I don't want my, I don't need my first time to be, I want it to be memorable because I yeah. like hooked up with the hot guy. I don't care if it sucks. Yeah. But then I don't want it to be a pity fuck. Yeah. yeah. So she like doesn't do it with like the dorky kid and just does it with the, like the hot loser guy. But then they do like hook up at yeah. the very last scene in the movie and he's just like really great in bed. Uh, okay, uh, of course. But it was just like, no, no, I don't care about that. Like I'm going to bang the hot, stupid guy. Yeah. And like, I thought that was well, really funny. Yeah, once you check it off your list, then it's fine. You go back to the other one, but you want your first one to be a good one. Yeah. But you know, those aren't necessarily the like happy movie endings. So yeah. It's like the yeah. dork's got to get with the pretty girl. Yeah. Uh, uh, you never see the dork girl and the hot jock. It doesn't happen nearly as much. I mean, you got your, she's all that. But it's like they the are Duff Ben. <laughs> I never saw the Duff. I assume. I didn't see the yeah, Duff. Okay. Either. But like usually they're they're just unattractive because they are wearing glasses or have braces or something like that. Like I want <laughs> I want <laughs> gross. <laughs> I want outcast girl goes after hot guy movie. Uh, what's what's the line from not another teen movie? It's like. Uh, like, oh, she's got glasses and got paint all over her clothes. <laughs> all over <her> overalls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I love that movie. Anyway, uh, Y2K. I think we've talked about it yeah. long enough. Um, what would you give this? I gave it a D plus. D plus. Wow. Yeah, I think uh, it's not funny enough. It, it, if this was just like a, you know, the same story, very mediocre, but they were just killing it with the jokes, mm-hmm. I'd I'd be totally fine to forgive everything. But it's not super funny. It does some bad uh, uh, decisions on characters living and dying. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the only thing that saves it is the robots look cool. I'll give it a C plus um, because I did laugh a couple times, uh, and I do like the look of the robots and. Uh, you know, despite it not being that great of a film, I'd like to see something else Kyle Mooney does and see, if, but I want him to just like lean more into the comedy. Sure. Uh, Cause it definitely reminded me of other films of uh, my youth that made me laugh yeah. quite a bit. So C plus I had a good time. Yeah. I can see him going down the same path as like a Michael show. Walter, you know, makes a ton of little sure. like, independent stuff, but like maybe it's a little niche for certain audiences. Yeah. Maybe transition to television. I don't know. Yeah. yeah maybe. But, all right, well, uh, that's it for that. Next week, Lord of the Rings, War of the Rohirrim. Let's do it. And Craven for the Rohan. Hunter. Burr, 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 burr. You have to see it, because then you could say you've seen all the Sony Picture movies. Oh, you didn't see Venom. I haven't seen any Venoms. Oh, okay, well, that's fine. They suck. But you got to see the really bad ones. And this could <laughs> potentially be a really bad movie. I will put money on this is the best. Yes one this we've seen in one. this universe a hundred percent i think so i think it will be a perfectly even though people movie. love venom i think craven the hunter will be sure. the best but people like tom hardy they like how weird it is i i don't think people really find that to be a good movie i think this will be oh the the script works the beats work mm-hmm. all the arcs work but maybe it's a little dull because it's just gonna be a guy fighting other, other well guys. i guess the rhino right yeah mm-hmm. the rhino will show up whatever which I- um so it's the three Venoms, Madam Web, Morbius, Craven, Craven, and then Spider Verse. <laughs> sure, you, we're not missing any movies. No, that's I feel good. like we're missing one. I know. It, it seems like oh, really? They went Venom, Venom, Morbius, Madam Web. Like, there's got to be something missing, but no, that's it. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that'll be a fun double feature. Nice extra long episode next week. So we don't even need to, like, watch anything else. That, that's two things. I can't running. wait. So if you want to get in contact with us, we are at WRPLpodcast at gmail.com. We're on Instagram, TikTok, Blue Sky, and Threads. As always, I'm Ben. And I'm Steve. And keep consuming. Dial-up tone. <laughs> <laughs>